School budgets are very, very tight. So what I would suggest to others who are interested is to start small. Speak to your Senko, speak to your equity champion, speak to your raising standards lead. You might just have enough to get started with your pilot. I love the challenge of maths. I love the way it's logical and it can make me think and it is predictable and it can look beautiful on a page when you work through some algebra. But I also love the way that it's creative and that it grows. For me, it's hugely important that our students have access to the best possible technology. So a few years ago, um, when the new A-level was coming in, I was a head of department of a large, um, high-performing comprehensive school where maths was the second most popular subject to psychology. I'll take that one, but it was in every option block and we also had further maths on the curriculum. Myself and my Key Stage 5 lead went to a training course being run by MEI on the new A-levels and sponsored by Casio. And it was here that we first came across the CG50 and we were amazed at what it was able to do. If all students had access to a graphing calculator, then the mathematical learning that takes place would improve. And then when it comes to exams, they'd all be able to perform to their potential. You can have an element of surprise. You ask them to type in the, the sine function into their calculator and then predict what the, the gradient function will be. And if it's set in degrees, they all, they've heard, you know, the derivative of sine x is cos x, that's what they expect to see. And then they put on the calculator and they find the gradient function isn't that at all when x is in degrees. And they start to ask questions, well, well you know, what's going on? And you can, then you can highlight the importance of radians. Or you can use the, the modify function on the calculator and ask them to look at a whole family of curves and then isolate individual properties. And that's real mathematical thinking. But if I've got some that can afford it and some that can't, it also means it's more challenging when it comes to teaching and supporting students. Because if there's a mixture of devices being used in the classroom, how do you train them? How do you help to support them to use it as their normal way of working? And being a comprehensive in a, in a, in a rural community meant that we were also acutely aware of some of the challenges it could mean for students to be able to access it. So we had a long-term plan and we actually gave the entire school community from year seven through to year 13 the opportunity to buy a calculator at a supported price or even for a number of students who might have had challenges. We looked at aspects of what we can do with school funding such as for the SEN or for PP and maybe even some department funding to try and reduce the price for some or even simply provide loan calculators for others so it came out of our budget and they gave it back at the end. When you do maths, especially as you go into higher end maths and then A-level as well, there's a lot of things you need to remember and one interconnects to the other. The calculator basically shows a visual representation of part of the problem, especially if graphs are involved or if you can show it graphically. That means it allows a student to think specifically about the problem and problem solve instead of having to visualize the graph. And there are certain students that that takes more time. If we don't have the graphic calculator, a lot of the students start to lose confidence, and if they lose confidence, they then stop trying. So the ca graphic calculator is not the solution, but it's actually a medium towards building confidence into their own abilities. With some of our most vulnerable maths learners, the lowest attaining group, but everybody has a Casio CG50 that they're able to use in their lessons. And when we're looking at some of the more difficult and challenging concepts in mathematics, such as plotting graphs, transformations of graphs or understanding how an equation links with a graph if your students always have access to a CG50 for their lessons and it's their normal way of working. There's no longer such a significant barrier for them to be able to understand what it's going to look like before they put it to paper. I've seen this used really powerfully with some of the most vulnerable and most disadvantaged students in mathematics. I acknowledge that that it's an outlay that, that students have got to make that decision that this is going to benefit them. And it undoubtedly does. They really will benefit from having that technology at their fingertips. 
throughout the two years, not just in the exam. When I got to see more students being able to access the maths and feel that satisfaction that I feel when I do the maths, that for me is the biggest driver in implementing something like this. Now I know a number of people might say, well there's free graphing um, technology that they can have on their phones or they've got on an iPad or they can have on their laptop. That's great, but they can't take that into their exams. I can completely understand how what I'm saying might sound unrealistic. So what I would suggest to others who are interested is to start small. You don't have to get all the devices at the same time. You can make a plan and start with small and then grow it little by little to the extent where then you have enough to run it out through the whole department. And that also gives you an opportunity to see the outcomes on a specific group of students. Then you can build the skills of those teachers as well, the same time as you're bringing more. Look at where might be the most impactful place, the member of staff who is the person most likely to be able to use it and influence others and, and, and have that as a pilot. Are you looking at your um, higher attaining, more confident math students who are going to be doing um, a further maths qualification at, at Key Stage 4? Or are you going to have a focus group on some of your um, most vulnerable, lowest attaining students? Um, often they can have additional funding for classes like that. It is quite surprising, I found, when I started doing it that way, how quickly it can ripple out across the school community and how other A-level students are interested in getting it. And then their siblings or, or GCSE students also want that same advantage if it's being talked about all of the time and there's that buzz and the excitement. I couldn't start this without getting a long set of calculators. So while I had time to build my own funds to be able to get enough calculators and then the training they offered. So they came and trained my team as well and we had a few opportunities with that so we chose the focus which then helped me then carry on myself. One of the things I always find useful looking out for is some of the special offer prices that Casio can do. They have supported funding to help schools to be able to purchase these calculators and get them in contact Casio, let them know what it is you're trying to do and have a conversation with them and you'll find that they're really, really responsive.